kids on Stop Scramble Animation Time thing. That's probably better. <laughs> hey kids, welcome to Styles Rumble Animation Time thing. Today we're going to play with Blue and have him do a thing. So if anybody's unfamiliar with my rig, it's free on Gumroad, so you can download it if you have Harmony 14. It should work for you, no problem. But yeah, that's there, available for download if you would like to play with this guy. If you use him, please tag me. I've had some viewers who have just posted some stuff on Instagram that they've animated, and it makes me so happy, you don't even know. I love it. It makes me super Super happy to see you guys using it. Oh, one thing I want to do, I'm just about to hit 500 subscribers and I'm a little bit overexcited. I don't know if I'll hit it by Sunday, but we're getting, we're getting down to the wire. So to celebrate preemptively my 500 subscriber count, I want to do some critiques. I think that would be super fun. So if you have some character animation, something small, just like a little character jump or a character run, or even if you just have character posing, character turnarounds, things like that. If you would like me to do an on-camera review on YouTube of your stuff, send me your stuff at stylesrumble at gmail.com. I'll, I'll put a thing in the video description about the requirements. In the subject line, I want you to put the word pineapple, okay? If you don't have the word pineapple in the subject line, I won't it won't get filed into the right spot okay so, so subject line pineapple and then you could either include if it's animation ideally a tpl if it's a, a harmony or if it's not done in harmony then a mov because that's what harmony can import and i can draw over it and i don't want to reformat stuff so if you send me something that's not formatted i, I might just say hey this is not formatted. I need an MOV as a reply, um, or I'll just not use it. If it's a drawing, if it's something like a character turnaround, things like, you know, the technical drawing that you need to do for animation, that, you know, that could be like anything Photoshop friendly, PNG, JPEG, PSD, any of that kind of stuff. And I can, I'm more than happy to do that. I think that would be a super fun thing to do, to do some regular critiques of baby animator stuff. So today... What we're going to do is play with blue here. I'm using the three quarter view. I've just shoved the rest of the views over here and I'm just going to talk a little bit about doing a jump. So let's give him a little thing to jump over. I don't know how many different color palettes I have in here because I use this for my burning stuff episode. Let's see. Can you see this gray? No, let's just use black. So we're just going to give him a little rock to jump over. Okay, I'm not going to spend 15 minutes designing a rock. Tracy, it's fine. It's, it's good enough rock. You can jump over that. And the line art's pretty thick. No, it's it's just a rock. So we're going to extend the exposure on that. Three-quarter blue is going to jump over this little rock. I was watching a bunch of videos, kind of get some good ideas in my head. Some reference videos of these like high-intensity workouts where these guys are jumping up on these big chairs. And I was like, that looks pretty pretty easy. I could do that. So I just like jumped up to like the first step in my staircase. And uh, I'm going to have to put a pause on the old fitness blogging, you guys, because I'm not capable. <laughs> but it's great to look at reference and kind of get an idea of what's actually happening when somebody's jumping over something. So first, I'm just going to set up my initial pose because I want this guy to be looking at the rock. And I don't want him to just be in default pose. It's just boring. I mean, even just tilting him a little bit, adjust the perspective on his shoulders. I have my headphones on because I'm listening to music today. So if I just break into song, I won't even edit it out. I'll just let you guys enjoy that mess. So here he sees Rock. He's just checking it out. You could get a little bit more slouch, give him some more personality. He's just like, hey, I see this rock. I'm going to jump over it. Well, I'm going to do the simple keys and the breakdowns. And we'll just see how far we can get in an hour or so. I'm going to spend a million years on this, but I, I just want to cover the basics. So here he's looking at the rock. I'm going to do the wind up next. So you could go through the huge fiasco of trying to use the inverse kinematic thing. So you get all these guys properties. I made a video about this. I'm not great at it because I just find it's not, it's not good, <laughs> but I find the best way to get these feet to stay where you want them to is to kind of play a little bit backwards here. When I was doing my study, like just watching these really attractive athletes jumping for science and learning, I wanted to really think about what happens when you're jumping. So the next pose, we're going to pull them down like this. And then because our body weight here is starting to come forward over the toes, our 
arms come back like this. And this also helps get a real good wind up on our jump. What our body is doing here is actually pulling, like you have a spring and you compress it like this. So it's pulling itself together just like a spring does. And you're bringing all your energy into this part of your body. Cause this is really, this chunk of mass here is what you need to get over this rock. Your feet, and they can get over easily, your arms and, and your head, they're all pretty light and, and they're going places, but this big chunk of mass here is what we're trying to get pushed over. So I like to think of a jump from this area and really think about how that weight is moving. And then the rest of it is kind of facilitating that movement. It's an, it's an assist. So we're pulling all of our weight down like this. So let's get Blue doing that. I'm going to pull a little bit of a weird thing on his legs. I'm going to bring his pelvis down because I know that's something I'm going to need to do. And I'm going to pull my body down as well. And then the legs, I'm actually going to animate in a little bit of a roundabout way. So instead of connecting from the master here, I'm going to grab the lower leg and the upper leg, which I can animate independently. And I'm going to animate those backwards. So here I'm bringing this down and then I can bring the leg down like this. So this might cause a little bit of a pain if we're tweening later. That's something we're gonna have to see. And for the torso, we're gonna work big to small. I know we're gonna do some weird stuff here with the pelvis, but we're gonna start with the biggest deformer part and then figure out our head and stuff. And we're gonna do, we're gonna bring our head down like this and then this leg, we're gonna do the same thing. So first we'll bend our lower leg. And then we're gonna grab the lower leg and upper leg together and then shove them where they need to be. These big old spider legs are a little bit of pain. So this pelvis, it doesn't have any kind of deformer on it. It's just been moved around. So if we want this part here, sir, what we can do is redraw it. Let's get our thing in position first. And we're thinking about where his torso is over his legs. Let's even bring it farther. And then I'm just going to redraw this pelvis here. So I'm going to create a drawing substitution, Alt Shift D. So here's one, here's two. We can put our regular pelvis back on frame three. Let me just scale this up so it's a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to bring one over here because I'm probably going to want his generic pelvis again. And then I'm just going to quickly go in and adjust this. I usually keep my light table off just because I'm fairly familiar with the rigs that I've been using nowadays. I don't need to see it. But if you turn your light on here, you're able to see this a little better. See which, which pieces you're using. Whatever gets the job done. Now this pocket. This is one thing that you want to think about where this pelvis would be. What I might actually do is create a drawing substitution of this pocket and I'm going to use it as an overlay for this leg because I have it there anyway. It doesn't make sense for it to be showing. And then I've got a cheap little piece of blue that I can muck around with and make sure that the leg is looking correct. You want to you want to get something that looks a little bit intentional. And then I'm going to, all right, so I could fill around with that for ages and not be satisfied. So it's starting to feel like he's got his downward momentum. These shoulders, I want them, this is the case of 2D rotation again, where things kind of rotate kind of on a weird angle, but they're not actually thinking about perspective. So because we have these shoulders built in, we can cheat some perspective here, make sure that they're a little bit more in line with the horizontal. So when he's coming forward, it's like he's actually bringing his stuff forward. But then this also, we want to consider that he's bringing his arms back. I think this shoulder we want to bring back a little bit like this. We don't want it to be too stick outy and weird just because the perspective would, um, would not work there. So. He's bringing his arms back and we're going to bend these a little bit. I'm thinking, I don't have any fists drawn for this guy, so I'm not going to bother with fists. So there we go. You can, because this kind of stuff is a little bit adjustable. I mean, you could go in and finicky play around with the feet, but I think just giving them a little bit of skew is going to make them feel like they're part of the pose, skewing from the, the actual plant without having them like move around because that's why I around with these legs a little bit so they wouldn't have these feet skating around but I do want them to be included you don't want just one piece of the character standing completely stock still I think that would look worse just this little shimmy gets them involved so let's think about the next pose so we're going from here 
The next thing, all this coiled energy is going to get pushed. So this area here and the, the torso, like the main body mass is what's going to be projected forward. And then, and then the legs are going to be pulled behind. So if you watch some basketball jumpers, their body will go and then they'll pull their legs up and it almost give them a little bit more push. It's like their legs are giving a secondary bit. So these arms are going to come forward. Whoop. And he's going to pull this body along with it. So let's bring our bean over, going that way. And this, you can think of it's just like a ball bounce. So the, the pelvis is going to come up and then linger in the air and then start falling faster. So think about those, those principles when you're doing this sort of thing. I'm not anywhere near the proportions of this. I'm just thinking about how these pieces would go. So these legs are going to straighten out. The arms are going to come forward. So everything is going to be pulling things in that direction. So what I'm going to do is actually grab this guy again because it's closer to what we need than this one. So I'm not going to take this thing, especially since we mucked around with the legs and there's weird some stuff in here. So I'm not going to try and get that to straighten out when I already have a straight. That's silly. So I'm going to take my straight, boop, boop. boop. I'm going to use that as the, the beginnings of this next pose. He wants his pelvis to get over the rock. So we'll get that about halfway. So we'll say this is the top of where he's going. We'll leave him a little bit back because he's going to have to bring these legs up and over. Boop. I'm going to get that head tuck in there. So he's still looking at it. And even already, this, I mean, this is a bad, but jumping sort of a look. Mm, pelvis thrust. Two. Okay, so I want to loosen these legs up just a little bit. And these feet, because they're fairly complex, I feel like they're going to have to get redrawn so that they look good, but that's something I'm willing to do. These arms up. And again, I'm going to get some more perspective out of these shoulders. So I still want them to be fairly squared across this way. Along this way, and I'm going to pull this shoulder forward because he's throwing his whole body towards the front here. And I think that's that's one thing that gets lost a lot in cutout animation is getting the shoulders working, getting the perspective on things, all that kind of jazz. When that gets neglected, it shows. And of course, these very generic hands do take away, I feel, from animation. So never be shy about redrawing your hands. So I think what I'm going to do is give this a little bit of foreshortening because I feel like he's jumping very uh, Barbie doll where his arms just kind of come super straight out. So instead of this straight here, I'm going to have his arm come forward a bit. So here's his, let me make sure I'm on the right drawing layer. So here he's coming up like this. And instead of his arm just rotating this way, I'm going to have it come more towards the camera like this. So I think that would add to this. I'm going to do shorten this arm up here and I'm going to create a drawing substitution so that I can get some roundness on the shoulder. Now I didn't shorten the sleeve because the line weight of this really shrinks down if you if you squish it like that. I find it easier to put in a little substitution since you have to change the perspective anyway. You could also do an envelope deformer that's really popular now, but I feel like something as simple as this cartoony sleeve doesn't need that much attention. And we'll bring this down. That's the good thing about a drawing substitution. I mean, if you're in there anyway, you might as well just improve the whole the whole shot. And give it a little back. Let's bring this around. I don't have any uh, real good hands, but I do have something a little bit more front facing. So once you get this high, uh, you get that initial push off, then the legs come up really quick. So I'm actually going to do another in the air pose. Let me actually let me let me do my landing pose and then we'll muck around with that. Let's, let's try and pretend we're doing this in a little bit of a traditional way. So again, my landing pose, I'm going to start with this because it doesn't make sense to use this. I mean, it's got foreshortening. It's got some additional drawings that we've done in there. So it doesn't make sense to use this one as the basis. Something like the feet, like getting these skewed redrawn feet, that's something I'd leave until all my keys were feeling a little bit happy. I think he might need a little bit more air if he wants to clear this. So now what I'm doing is I'm just skimming back and forth and I'm thinking about where all that weight was. Like I said, this area in here, 
is really what you're trying to get over it. And I mean, Blue has a gigantic head, so he'd probably have a little bit more difficulty getting that up and over than his little twig body. But people respond a little better to physics that makes sense in their in their own head than cartoon logic or, or trying to deal with the, the real physics of a gigantic head. We could actually... We could maybe use this one as a base instead, now that I'm thinking about it. Let's see. Let's take that and we'll put it in the middle here. So let's let's take this guy and we'll sneak it in here and see if that will work. We're going to put him right here and then we can move our master peg because that's like where I'm using this outside peg to move it. So if we want our feet to be in the exact same place, then we can make sure that our final drawing here has the same location because I'm using this as my translate peg. That actually doesn't work too badly. And of course, I'm all my keys are stacked here. It's only like six frames long. But if I played at quarter speed, we're already starting to get something that feels a little bit like a jump. So by reusing this, I feel like that's a good thing. But the arms, I don't think they're going to be way that far back. So what I could do is use these arms instead. I think I need the whole shoulder rig. Let's grab that whole shoulder and just drag that over. Well, that's feeling a little better already. This one doesn't work quite as well because we're losing that perspective. I like that the shoulder is coming up much higher. So when he impacts, so he's hitting the ground here and his force is coming down here and then the ground's force is pushing back as well. So the body is going to keep going forward because the ground is not hitting it. And the arms, which were up in the air in the front, they're going to come down because again, so the, the arms that were up, once it hits, the downward momentum stops, the arms are going to continue because there's nothing stopping the arms. Hopefully this makes sense. <laughs> Hang this in a fine art gallery and make millions of dollars. All right, so let's get the shoulder up. I like the idea that the torso is kind of coming around a little bit faster than his shoulders are. His shoulders are going to follow through later. That feels nice to me. And I might even have his head linger a little bit more. It hasn't really gotten that follow through yet. I feel like his, this needs to come back this way a little bit. Center it over his uh, his body. Shoulders are so angular. So I'm wondering, like, maybe his arms would go a little bit higher in between here and here. So maybe that would even be better if his arms were higher. Yeah, so I feel like between here and here, our arms need to go up a little bit more just to continue that motion. And then once it hits, it starts coming back down and around. So I'm playing this at six frames per second. So it's a quarter of the speed that my actual keys are placed on because I'm just stacking my keys. Yeah, that feels okay. This could be, I mean, we could push this farther. I feel like we could get more scrunch out of this pretty easily with that deformer. All right, so this is starting to feel a little bit good. So the next thing I need to do is just set up my timing. So I'm just going to leave a little hold at the beginning, a little bit. So I'll say one, two, three, and then jump. So I'll give that a little beat there. So I'm going to make sure all of my frames here are on odds because I'm going to put this on twos. So playing with these auto tweens, you're going to get a really floaty motion out of this. And you might be saying to yourself, but Tracy, he's not clearing it. But like I said, the legs, when you jump, get pulled up after. You don't, usually when someone jumps over a rock like this, they don't jump this high. They, they tend to jump a little bit lower. And then we can throw in a key here. And I want one that's very close to the same height here for this. So this is where I'm going to bring up these legs. This is what I was talking about. We're going to bring them up so he lingers a little bit at that height. And this one is going to be a pretty big change between this key and the next. Because this happens so quickly. I was like, when I was watching this, I was like, wow, these people, like, they move so fast. I'm not a fast, athletically moving person. So he's going to tuck his legs up under. This foot needs to be a little bit closer to the side view there. And his body is going to do this. Like, so I found it really interesting watching this footage, seeing how there was like a secondary amount of getting force happening. Now this redraw arm is a little bit weird, so we're going to give him another redraw arm. This is thinned out and stuff just because we did do a weird drawing. But I want to make sure this is really clean up here, this shoulder. Hmm. All right, so let's talk about that shoulder. So here I want his arm to come up quite a bit. And 
All right, I've seen stuff like this and cut out and I don't like it. I think when the shoulder and arm come up over that, that's just the perfect opportunity for this type of drawing where the shoulder and the back become one line and then the neck would be somewhere over here. I just love this curve. I think it's so beautiful. So that's what I'm going to get. That's what I'm going to try and aim for out of that shoulder. This is not a beautiful drawing, but hopefully you know that curve I mean, getting all this into one thing. So let's yank this forward. Be aggressive. Sometimes you need to be aggressive. My shoulders have deformers in them. So that's easy enough to get curved into the back there. As long as our line weight is cooperating, I feel like the shoulder's a little too narrow. So there's some line thickness back there. Yeah, that's that's all right. So I want to make sure this is all tidy. Don't ever be afraid to just hack up an arm for one frame. Just I mean, you can make a new drawing substitution. It's not precious. So we can just hack all this off. You can just copy and paste a good arm if you turn this into a load of slob. Like, don't be shy. That's one thing I think a lot of BBNers do. They're, because they're so new to the network, like there's all this stuff in here, they're afraid they're going to break their character forever. But I've never come across an animator that's managed to break a character irreparably where I couldn't fix it for them. <laughs> Sometimes they do need, like, okay, guys, I, I unplugged something or um, something really got tangled up here. But... I mean, it's always fixable. And the only way you're really gonna push yourself is if you're if you're willing to get something broken. <laughs> the, the timing of the jump is to... <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, some people find it really hard to work on tweens like this. If you do find this floaty stuff really confusing, just a keyframe out all of your guys and then turn it on stop motion and you'll have a little bit of an easier time seeing that timing. See, so from there to there. So this is auto-tweened. This is on stop motion. So it's just all staggery. And it's not on twos. It's not even. Nothing's filled in. But you're starting to feel the timing, whether it's working or not. I think a lot of jumps are too slow. Gravity is a harsh mistress, man. It'll drag you back down real quick. So I just want to put one in between here and here. And what happens if we push this back? I feel like one more is going to do us. It's going to do good for us. Boop. Boop. I'm even going to bring him back a little bit. Bring him. So I'm, I'm paying attention to this uh, pelvis again, where we've got all this mass. So the pelvis is going from here to here and then down here. So this guy here, we can uh, put him a little bit closer like this and start bringing those legs forward towards landing zone. See, this is almost to me starting to feel a little bit like a slow jump. And it's only one, two, three, four, five, six frames from ground to ground. So that's 12 frames total. Half a second doesn't seem like a, a long time, but it is. So what, what I'm going to do is take this part here, and I'm going to slow it down. So I don't think we can auto-tween very well. Mm, half of it. The knees and stuff are going to have to be a little bit adjusted because we were worried about our feet there. And the arms, the arms are very, very mechanical. So I think what I'm going to do is take... One from here. So I'm trying to think about where my slow in, slow outs are going to be. So I want there to be a little bit of a hover down here where he lingers. Oh, I have two drawings there. So it's only five frames, ten frames. So I want him to hang out down here a little bit. So we can take a couple frames from this side. So they're very close together. Even that, I can, I can half that again. So here he's kind of lingering at the rock and then the jump is going to happen. We can also get his eye line to follow the rock and get a blink in there, get his face alive. That kind of stuff is going to be cool. But we're going to hang out here a little bit. And then I'm going to grab a couple from back here as well. So, so I'm getting a slow in and a slow out here. Let's see how that feels. So I'm slowing out and slowing into this action. So he's hanging. He's slowly getting down here. I feel like that could be even slower. So I'm going to take the halfway between here and here. Bring that over. Slowing out and then slowing in because I want him to hang out down here for a sec. Just a little like building up that tension, getting the last of the, the spring out of that. And 
And the next thing I want to do, like it's all, it's starting to feel okay. Um, but like I said, these arms are really mechanical. They're, they're just kind of swinging backwards at a, at a strange rate. So what I want these to do, I'm going to come down here to the arm and I don't want it to swing back until down here. So let's grab a couple in-betweens and then I'm going to drag those in-betweens down here so that it happens later. So now this part, the arm is going to come forward and then back. And I need to get that shoulder involved too. So shoulder comes forward and then back. See, that feels a lot better. The arm is now it feels like it has a little bit of independence from the body because you're not going to swing your arms back and like it's just it doesn't all happen in the same trajectory. So the arm comes forward, then swings back. And it's if it swings back a little bit quickly, it's it's almost like it's building more momentum. It's it's collecting some energy as it goes back. And then it goes, it's thrown forward there really quickly. So it's going from here to here. We can put a swish in there. I think that'd be cool. And then this back arm, you can see now how silly the back arm looks. The arm is kind of sticking out of his butt there. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to mirror the motion here of this front arm with the, the back arm. Here we go. And the hands are really stiff. I haven't put any bend in the hand. So if you watch carefully this hand, it's this one here in, in particular stays very, very stock still. This line is very straight the whole time. So just by going along and doing this, just by breaking that line a little bit, it doesn't have to be much. It really, it can be super subtle. And now because it's coming back really fast, you can get a little swing on that, a little bit of a pendulum in this arm as well. These these long gangly limbs. I think if I do another character for you guys, it's going to be something a little less gangly. Build up, build up, boom. And now we're getting contrast because this first movement is a little bit slower. He's going from here to here over the course of 11 frames. And then on frame 13, he goes from there to there. So you can see that there's a much bigger movement from there to there. Contrast. And we want these arms here to feel a little bit floppier too. I love putting in just some loose arm movement, making sure that the different parts of the arm don't feel like they're moving in sync because that's not something that our arms do like a mannequin. So here I'm just keeping an eye on the lower, on the upper and lower arm and making sure that this angle here is changing significantly enough. So we can even bring it up more. Those widening. So I don't know if I want anything between here and here. I don't think I do, or I'd want it on ones, if anything. So I want from here, like once his feet hit, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is have some, when he goes from here to here, I want something to fill in the arcs, I think. Yeah, let's fill that in on a one, just to see. We could change the timing of it later. Now I've got these weird legs that we have to counter animate. And what I'm doing is I just want to, have this uh, body swish a little bit more. So I put that on a one. That feels okay. I think it just clarifies what's happening a little bit. And then we need a settle. So we need something between here and here. So once our legs hit, our body is going to come forward a little bit. So our body and our arms are going to continue. Let me see if I can find a normal arm and start here instead of that uh, must up arm. So I want to start bringing that back around to its normal perspective. See, so yeah, like that. So the arms and stuff keep going. The legs, I just want a little bit more cushion. So we're going to continue on with our weird little backwards leg scenario and then having the pelvis follow along. So I just feel like I want a balancing pose so I could even leave this a little bit, have him kind of settle back a little bit more and start regaining his balance and coming, coming up. So now instead of redoing these legs, I have these legs and then a little bit more settled so I can pop them back. Head here is far back. Then the head's going to come down and forward. So I'm just trying to think of that follow through, like the head's almost being left behind here. Oops. But trying not to get 
too many of those uh, weird character, or those weird rotations in here. So in between here and here, this one I feel like just needs, goes from here to here. So not everything is going to reach there at the same time. The shoulders and stuff can lag behind a little bit. The head can lag behind a little bit. So just slowing out of that movement. And we don't want the, the lower body to be stock still. That's never a good thing. So we're going to just have these bent ever so slightly. His pelvis snaps a little bit at the back and here. Snap. So I feel like between here and here could have... You could even slow out some more. So the, the last thing I would do is go through and make sure his face was alive. So you could have him like thinking, furrowing his brows, things like that. You don't want to have him too stock still. You could have him blink as he comes up. So just throw a little blink in there, give him some alive. I feel like his pupils are very small. You can't even see them when it's not being rendered. And I big him up a bit. Obviously, if you're doing something on a production, you can't do this. But if it's just a one-off and you don't like... If you don't like anything about this character, feel free to change it. Clothes, hair, whatever you want. That's not a big deal. Seeing his eyes a little bit nice. And then here, we wanted to change his eye direction. We could do that. Have him keep looking at that rock. And like, oh, I showed you raw. And then just cut out all the, all the pupil keyframes after that. So that his eyes don't dart back on us. There you go. He can feel real proud of himself for jumping over that rock. Boop. And last things that I would do is go into this poof. Blow out all the keys. Boom. And then I'd straight ahead the, the poof. Because I want that to be... It's nice and fluffy. I want it to be really reactionary to whatever he's doing. So this is sort of a slow out. So I'm just going to give a little bit of a smush. He comes right up like this. So let's really get this poof poofing. Poof. There we go. So that's not too bad. A little jump. I feel like this is still a little bit too snappy here. Between here and here. So maybe between here and here there could be a little bit more of a, a cushion. If you're going for really snappy animation, I mean, you could you could do that stuff. It's really a style thing. I'm not going for any super stylized thing right now. I'm just going for general function, like just a simple working version of what it is. And I feel like if you're just starting out in animation, it's a little better to do that. Start off with just a little functioning thing. I feel like the weight, like the character is not floating too much, like your arcs are working. These arms could be a little bit faster here. They're a little bit slow. And then just playing it through and seeing how you feel about it. A lot of animation just comes with time, looking critically at animation and getting to see those arcs and stuff. Your eyes grow a lot as you animate and as you watch other people's animations as and as you hear critiques of animation as well. So whenever you can see someone get their animation critiqued, there's lots of YouTube channels to do that kind of thing by all means get as much of that as you can i learned a lot of stuff just sitting next to an animation supervisor i was in the effects department but they just kind of put me next to the other su supervisors and i could just listen to him give critiques all day to the character animators and i just i just eavesdrop on all their conversations and i learned absolutely so much just listening to them talk about thinking about what the character's doing and thinking about the weight of the character. Just there's so many things in animation to keep track of that you don't even realize until somebody points it out. Or I guess some, sometimes you learn it intuitively, but I think you, you really learn a lot from seeing other people get their work critiqued. I think it's super valuable. All right, so I don't think that's too bad for an hour. All right, so we've just gone through and tidied up our little knees and stuff. Made sure that our feet weren't swapping where they weren't supposed to. But I mean, for an hour, say 10 minutes, I think, is how long I've been working on this. Not too bad. Hopefully you've learned a few tricks along the way about shifting your keys around and thinking about which key is the best one for doing new poses. Don't, I mean, you don't have to do everything from scratch over and over again. If you're working cut out, the whole, the whole purpose is to be economical about it. Also, just thinking about contrast and timing so that you've got this stuff. I mean, you could even get more contrast in here where we really slow down this part. We could drag this out for who knows how long. Let's drag it out a ton just to see how, how ridiculous it looks. 
Now it's going to take a really long time between those two keys we had. And there's no slow out. You would almost want to slow out there on the arms. Mm -hmm. But just it, it gives you an idea of putting in contrast between slow and quick, getting your quick stuff feeling quicker. And a jump, I, I, stuff like a jump and a little walk, I feel like that they get, they often get overblown. So if, if a character is just doing a little jump over a rock, they're not going to need this huge jump to get over it because you do, you bring your feet up after you jump. So there is that, you don't need to get your feet above the rock. You need to get your, your weight above the rock, which is one good thing to keep in mind. So hopefully lots of things to fill in your brain. If there are any comments or questions or anything like that, please leave them down below. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover in my announcements, so that's it. Like, share, subscribe. All those things internet people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video or on Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when I will be streaming. I'm going to put that in a banner or poster somewhere or make a schedule. I don't know. Ampy's on my back. He's not like Tracy. Be more consistent. Make a schedule. And I'm like, oh, I'm so lazy. You don't want to. I'm a manager. <laughs> okay. I'm going now, for realsies. Bye!